Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, we are going to learn how to interface a 4 into 4 matrix keyboard to 8086 microprocessor using an interfacing device like 8255. Yeah, it all sounds very big. It's pretty simple. Understand this. At home, in your computer, you have a keyboard, correct? Now, every time you press a key on the keyboard, the information should be given to the processor. But you don't connect the keyboard directly to the microprocessor. You connect the keyboard to one of the ports of your computer. Am I right or no? Then from the port, the information is given internally to the microprocessor. Now, that's exactly what you're seeing in this diagram. This is your keyboard, which is connected to the ports of 8255. 8255 in turn through the data bus will give the information to the microprocessor. So in your computer on the motherboard, this is your microprocessor. And towards the end of your computer, towards the side panels are those ports. Those ports come from a chip like 8255, of course the modern version of it. And to those ports is connected your keyboard. Is the picture clear? Now, the first thing I want you to understand is, why do we need a matrix keyboard? The concept of a matrix keyboard is far more intense than a regular keyboard. Now, students try to understand this whole diagram. They probably even end up doing it and write the whole thing in the exam, but they still don't know why they are using a matrix keyboard. And that's pretty much the case with a lot of answers that we learn in engineering. But I've been telling you in all my videos, the first thing I want you to learn is why you are learning this topic. What's the advantage of a matrix keyboard? Look here. Now, there are two types of keyboards in the world. A normal keyboard, which some textbooks also refer to as a linear keyboard, which is very simple. It's a child's work to play with that keyboard. And then the matrix keyboard, the big one. Now, why do you need this? Look here. Suppose this is your processor. You have a very small keyboard, something that is used in the panel of this remote control with just a handful of buttons. Now, suppose there are only four buttons. Now, you know these buttons are input to the processor. So, I need to connect them to the processor. One option. I connect all of them on a common signal to the processor. Now, will this be a good idea? Certainly not. Why? Because looking at this line, you will only come to know that a key was pressed. You will never come to know which key was pressed. You will never be able to differentiate between the keys because they are all giving the same common signal. Do you understand what I am saying? Now, to understand which key is pressed, it is absolute common sense that if you have four keys, you should be connecting them on four different lines. Now it becomes very simple. Read this port, looking at the combinations of ones and zeros, you will come to know which line was one, which line was zero, which means which key was pressed. Now you can identify the key that was pressed. So this was simple. What did you conclude from this? For four keys, you need four lines. For eight keys, you'll need eight lines. 16 keys, 16 lines. So as the number of keys increase, the number of lines increase in a linear manner. Hence, casually people also call this keyboard a linear keyboard. Is it difficult? No. As I said, all you have to do is just read the port, you'll come to know which key is pressed. It's very simple. But what's the drawback? It uses too many lines. Now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight keys, you will still work with a linear keyboard. But if you think of the keyboard that you're using in your computer, just look down. <laughs> There are lots of keys, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, depending on which kind of keyboard. If you have a gaming keyboard, maybe more. With so many keys, you cannot have so many lines. For 100 keys, you cannot waste 100 lines in the circuit. So what you need is a smarter keyboard, which can incorporate more keys using much lesser number of lines. That's where you need a matrix keyboard. Now, the moment you hear the word matrix, what comes to your mind? Matrix, apart from the movie, of course, a yeah, fab movie, <laughs> way ahead of its time. But the word matrix simply means there'll be rows and columns. So that's the idea. Let's say we take four lines, use them as rows. We take four more lines, use them as columns. So how many lines have we taken? 4 plus 4. This is called a 4 into 4 matrix keyboard, which has used only 8 lines. But on these 8 lines, if you notice, there are 16 intersecting points. If you plant a key on every intersecting point, reading the row and the column, identifying the row and the column, you can still come to know which key was pressed. So your purpose is solved. You can identify the key that was pressed. How many keys are you getting? 16 keys. How many lines are you using? Only 8 lines. Otherwise, 8 lines would have given you 8 keys. Here, 8 lines are giving you 16 keys. So, you are getting your target. You are getting more keys using less number of lines. Now, over here, this 8 and 16 seems to be just 2 times. No, it's not 2 times. You are smart. 
if you use a 8 into 8 keyboard what does that mean 8 rows and 8 columns you're using 8 plus 8 16 lines but you're getting 64 intersecting points will give you 64 keys using only 16 lines a 16 into 8 keyboard will give you 128 keys using only 24 lines 24 lines is what an 8255 can give you 8255 has three ports i'm sure you know 8255 right it has three ports port a port b port c each port is eight bits so that means there are eight lines eight into three so using 24 lines 16 lines as rows and 8 lines as columns you can connect 128 keys using a single 8255 otherwise you would have required 128 lines so that's the advantage of a matrix keyboard so somebody asks you in viva why do you use a matrix keyboard give me the reply to connect more keys using less number of lines is it more complex than a normal keyboard of course it is in a normal keyboard you just have to look at the the, the lines and instantly you come to know which key was pressed here you have to run a program which will identify the row and the column and based on that you will come to know which key was pressed students say sir we press a key so fast this much time we take to press a key now this is not a second this is much lesser than a second a few milliseconds am i right or no uh, about 100 milliseconds you can press 10 keys in a second at the most so do the math about 100 milliseconds now students say in this much time does a processor have the time to go and run a program to identify the row and the column to identify the key that is pressed of course a processor has a time processor doesn't work in milliseconds processors work in microseconds nanoseconds picoseconds depending on what frequency you're using so my point is processors can do so many operations in a second they have ample time between your key down and key up processors have ample time to run this program thousands of times if they need it so that's the idea so that's what a matrix keyboard does so what am i going to do in this video First, I'm going to tell you what all of this is. If you know minimum mode, you are familiar with this diagram. This is minimum mode of 8086. So I'm going to explain to you this briefly. Then I'm going to tell you what is the role of 8255. How do you do mapping? How do you do designing of 8255? Then finally, we'll come to the keyboard part. You use two different ports for rows and columns. There's a reason behind it. This, this concept is not over. The concept is just started. I've just planted the seed. I'm going to be telling you how this whole keyboard works. Uh, that's the scope of this video. Now, you know what I've been doing. This is an introduction. You want to watch the whole video. You want to learn the whole subject from me. You want to enjoy learning the subject. Come on my website. That's www.bharataracharyaeducation.com. You'll find not just this video. There are more than 200 videos on that website divided into various courses. So this video will be there in the course of 8086, which already has about 40, 42 videos. Uh, they cover everything from the beginning architecture, the whole uh, flag register, the whole instruction set, addressing modes, programming, all of the interfacing, peripheral chips, minimum mode, maximum mode, interrupts, etc. Everything that a person needs and the big designing, the system designing. Now, all of those videos are there in the 8086 channel. Uh, yes, it's a paid website. Of course, this is professional service. This is not my hobby. Uh, but I've kept the fee as low as possible so that maximum students can benefit from it. And at the same time, it's viable for us to conduct this whole exercise. We're doing shooting day in and day out, editing, uploading, maintaining the servers, etc. So the cost of the subscription is $9.99. Once you make the payment, instead Instantly the videos become active. You can start watching the videos. You can watch the videos as many times as you want to. Your subscription remains active for six months. So you can watch the videos as many times as you want. Learn, enjoy the subject. And along with every video, you also get a small PDF. If there's a button, when you click that, a PDF opens, which has the diagram and the whole theory answer. So you understand the concept from the video, and then you also have the answer, the answer that you're supposed to write. Being an engineering student, you know, it's not generally easy to get the correct material to write. Uh, I've been teaching the subject since 20 years in Bombay City. Uh, I pretty much know what is what an examiner expects by now. So uh, I've put in all the material that I've put is from the best of the textbooks that are there in the market in the simplest language possible. Of course, I'm not inventing this subject. We are all learning the subject. So from the best material that I could get, I made it as simple as possible so that students can easily grasp it and also reproduce it in the exam. Okay. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.